everybody i'm here again with this time with iman and mark barlow i am particularly pleased uh we've ju i've just confirmed iman's fight record um i said how many titles have you got world titles and then it yeah. fell off my chair because i had no idea it was so many so Iman's got 19 world titles and um, she's had 115 pro fights that's not including the junior fights and of that she's had six losses and is it three draws three draws I can't yeah. read my own writing six losses and three draws 115 fights I mean that's that's like a Thai record that that's like a somebody who lives in Thailand how are you doing guys are you okay yeah great thanks yeah all good thank you Oh, brilliant. So thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. It's been great chatting to everybody. And uh, I've never spoken to you before, Iman. And I know me and Mark have met before. But uh, yeah, this is great. I was, I'm so chuffed that you're doing it together as well. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm interested in that dynamic, you know, the father-daughter training dynamic. So <laughs> to start off, okay, throw it over to you guys. So where do you train? Just for anybody who doesn't know Iman. Um, how long have you trained for? Who are your coaches? Is it anybody else other than just your dad? And why did you start training? Did Mark make you start training or were you just like, I've got to do it? So I'm 27 years old now. Uh, I've been training since I was two and a half. Um, <laughs> so my mum used to be a fighter and my dad owns Assassin's Muay Thai. So that's based in Mount Mowbray and Leicester. Um, so when my dad was teaching classes and my mum was uh, teaching classes, I just used to sit there really and play with my toys, you know, instead of being with a babysitter. Um, and then it's just kind of just started copying what the adults were doing and, and started joining in. Um, I was four years old when I had my, my first fight. Uh, and it's just been since there, really. So, so yeah, my dad is my coach. That's it. Um, so... You've, you've had the Iman at the gym since she was a, a baby. I, I know how that works myself. Um, when did you realise she was going to be dead good? Uh, I, know, uh, I remember one day when he was in the gym, I think uh, it was one day when she wasn't at uh, crash. So he used to take her down to the gym and I'd train in the morning myself. And uh, she was just messing around. She said, I'll can I go on the running machine? So I let go on the running machine and I carried on trading and about an hour later I turned around and she was still on the running machine. <laughs> and she was like, drenched with sweat, just going for it. And I told her, well, she's gone, I've got an engine on her. She just really just wanted to, uh, wouldn't stop. <laughs> I thought it's either really good or she's very strange. Yeah, <laughs> run Forrest, run. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone the opposite way of that. That's lucky, isn't it? That that would be a good indication. You've got the right the right mindset is what you yeah. spotted, I guess. Rather than a skill set, you spotted a mindset. Yeah. Which is, you know, I say to that's the thing you that's the thing I find the hardest to teach. I don't think you can teach it to a certain degree. I think you, you can kind of instill some um some you can instill the right values and thoughts, but actually getting that feeling in your heart, I think it's individual. And I think that's why personally you can give people the skills, the, the, the tie boxing skills, but giving them the kind of passion and the heart. Yeah. To yeah. Me, yeah. You have big heart. If you haven't got a big heart, you know, good as a fighter. Yeah. And you can't, you can't make it happen. You know, it's something that you've got to, you, I think that people, yeah. some people just have it and then some people can develop it, but mostly, yeah, I can't teach it. And you kind of want to put it in people sometimes, don't you? You know, you want to get it and put it in, but you, you know, you can't, but I mean, what's it like, um, being cornered and taught by your dad? I mean, and, and also what's it like doing it, Mark? Because I mean, you know, you get attached to all your fighters and if she gets a good, a bit of a shoe in, which obviously doesn't happen very often because because uh, <laughs> of a record. But if he gets injured or Ty gets injured, um, I mean, how do you feel about it? Um, I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, obviously, I've never really known anything different apart from, you know, my dad being in my corner. and But I, I don't know. It's just all I know. And, you know, obviously, I know my dad is the person that wants the best for me. So I'll never be, you know, out of my depth. and. And yeah, oh, that's... you know what I mean? I just feel safe in there and 
yeah. you know he's there yeah and I'm get, like he can see a lot of things in the ring outside the ring that I can't see in the ring so I'll always that's one thing you know when people ask me for advice it's just like always listen to your corner yeah. um and you if you watch a lot of my videos as well you can hear my dad shouting and he'll shout an instruction and I'll do it straight away and that's what works like I'm inside the ring and he's outside almost like controlling it and seeing the gaps and then I kind of execute it blimey perfect <laughs> <laughs> so what's oh, it like? do you, do you... I, I, I um I don't really have a problem with the kids fighting. Um Iman's been knocked out before. And I wasn't actually in the corner. That was a uh, an infusion reality. And I think that's the reason why she got knocked out, to be honest. Because the corner was crap. You know, I told her from when the it was like a 16 woman competition. 16 woman competition. So uh, she had to have one fight one night, was it? And then is it two days later? Oh, yeah, then the rest of the tournament? Yeah. After the first fight, I said to him, on, this ain't for you. And she goes, what? I said, this ain't for you. I said, I think you should pull out the tournament. I could see in her that she, uh, she wasn't at her best. Um, I could see massive guard, gaps in a guard, you know, she wasn't doing a normal self. And I actually told her, you know, because we weren't even allowed to be in the same hotel, was we? No. So um, I was staying in a different hotel, and she came to my hotel room, and I says, Iman, pull out, pull out of this. And she goes, no, I want to do it. And I says, no, pull out of it, this ain't for you. I had this gut feeling, and... Um, I learned years ago through Maxine, my aunt's mum, she said to me, if you ever feel that gut feeling, go with it. Because to be honest, if I get this gut feeling, it, it normally comes true. And mm -hmm. um, Iman was adamant, she didn't want to pull out the fire. Uh, and I said, well, okay, you're old enough now, you know, make your own decisions. But um, no, it's not for you. Uh, she did really well. She got to the final. And... Um, got caught didn't you yeah but there was a story behind that but not many people know about this story either yeah in fact i didn't know about it i fell off um so we're doing this thing and basically i fell off i was on my manager's scooter you know like motorbike going up this massive hill and uh it, the hill was so steep he says oh get off get off and i thought he was joking but we started rolling back down the hill so basically I fell off the motorbike and whacked my head and I blacked out and had, well, it's a concussion, isn't it? But obviously I didn't really know what concussion was at the time, you know, because I'd never had it or I twisted my ankle, uh, blacked out, and then I, I didn't tell my dad either. Were you 16? No, I was 18, I think. You don't tell Pete, you don't tell, you, 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 yeah. you're 16, you're 18, they don't tell you anything, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Normally, um, you yeah, find I out. To, like, I knew what I was there. We'd gone to Thailand early to train for it. Like my dad had spent his own money, you know, on on flights, and I thought I'm here now. I might as well just carry on. I feel fine. But obviously, when I got home, I didn't tell my dad after I'd lost nothing. And then when I got home, I told my mum, and she like was like, "Are you crazy? You know, it's like <laughs> you know this, this, and this." it's so dangerous and then it wasn't till my dad kept giving me a stick in the gym you know about not about getting knocked out but you know you did this wrong you did that wrong and my mum just says like why don't you just tell him i was like no i can't it's even worse now like a month's passed by and then in the end my mum had to tell him <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so, you learn from it like yeah. it's just all a bit mad i know i mean um what, what does he would you make the same decision now if you got concussed the day before a fight 100 percent not like i don't do as much stupid things like i was trying to like think logically there was this massive hill like you know in thailand like i can't even describe how steep it was and i thought oh i'll be clever and go on the motorbike to save my legs like and then that happens please your, your ankle was bad as well wasn't it yeah i got told that iman fell off a motorbike and she hurt her ankle 
nothing else. So I went into her bedroom. She's there with the physio, um, strapping all up. And I said, how are you going to fight with your ankle like that? She goes, don't worry about it, I'll do it. And then she had three fights. So she fought three really tough girls um, and got to the final with a bad ankle and concussion. And then she, and she was winning the fight and she just got caught with the left hook uh, against Anissa Metzen. And Anissa Metzen is a fantastic fighter. Um, and you can't have any injuries when you fight her. You've got to be 100%. But nobody knows this. This is a, a, a thing that's been going on for how many years? Yeah, I mean, like, when we did the infusion, obviously, like, you weren't allowed to say anything about the results because it was all going to be, you know, like, showcased on TV and things like that. So it was kind of an odd one. Like, this massive thing happened to me and then not many people known. And then, you know, like, a few, later, a few years later, there was, like, videos of it and it, like giving me nightmares <laughs> oh god <laughs> what is don't know the story but you know at the end of the day i did get caught and i did get knocked out but you got to the final as well i mean I, yeah. I can see just by watching you two guys that uh that anything other than winning is like not, not satisfied it's not I'm not satisfied unless it's uh, unless it's a win see to me that sounds like a quality a quality kind of result um you got to the final with concussion and all that i mean obviously glad you didn't like you know have any long-term issues of that um and thanks for the first ever red kite exclusive yeah, really <laughs> that's great really. i don't really like speaking about it but i've dealt with it now i'm not too bad yeah yeah exactly i mean yeah because it's um everybody does things when they're 16 and 18 and 20 year, you know when you when you're young and you think you know it all you know i know i was a grown-up when i was 18 i knew the whole shebang you don't you know i'm 18 now i know everything yeah. you know um but you don't you don't do so everybody you know if you're going to make your mistakes it's better to do it when you're 18 that's what i say you know and you're all right you know you're all right in the end so and um you survived to tell the tale and uh and and, yeah. and mark obviously didn't kill you for uh for uh, not telling him about yes, it. I think you just like, you have to learn from your experiences and everyone always says that, but I definitely learned from that one the, the hard way, but you know. What do after you... She was gutted, you know, after she lost and obviously really upset. And uh, I said, right, you're going to go out, you're going to put your clothes on, you're going to be dancing shoes on and you're going to go out and you're going to enjoy yourself <laughs> in front of everybody and show them that it means nothing. Yeah. So she went out that night, didn't you? Yeah. And every, yeah. I mean, I remember Edwin saying, is it mine or not? Is it mine or not? I said, why? She, goes, she looks really happy. I said, yeah, she's just trying to get over it and having a good time. Oh, good. Is that, is that what, so like, how does this work then? Do you bollock her when she's in trouble, when she was younger, or do you do the whole disappointed? No, definitely. Disappointed face. Yeah, bollocking. Oh, yeah. Bollocking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bollocking. Not the. No, mum was disappointed. Dad was the bollocker. Yeah. Oh, the bollocker. I'm known for being straight talker anyway. Yeah. I'll just, I just say how it is. Yeah, that's, yeah I, I say me here. I think that's uh, the best way to be, to be honest. Uh, at least you know where you stand, you know. That's the best That's the best thing about that. So, yeah, you expected that, I guess, in man, didn't you? You were going to get an absolute uh, ass whooping off your dad, and then your mum was going to go, disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Always gets you in the soul the disappointment, I think, yeah. for me, it did. <laughs> oh, so, your son's um, a Thai boxer as well, Mark, isn't he, Thai? Yeah. Yeah, so, what's it like, do you, I, I think I already know the answer to this question, well, I hope so anyway, which is why I'm going to ask it. Have you, um, have you is it different, treat, is, it, have you, is there any difference to, like, training your daughter on your son? Do you treat them both the same? Um, Good question. Uh, no, well, they've all, they're all both different as fighters. So, in training wise, yeah, there is difference. Because um, Iman is, she works really hard, you know, she's strong, and you, you, you tell her to do something, she'll do it. Uh, and Ty is very technical. And um, on his day, Ty can make anybody look stupid, can't he? Mm. Um, so, in training, yeah, both, I teach them differently. Um, but in the, in the fights, no, I don't, normal, no, I don't think so anyway. 
So it's not it's not gender related. It's just uh, as I assumed would be the case, which is why I asked. I think if you, I think I don't know if they're asked if I thought it was going to be different, but yeah, it's more based on the style and their uh, their different approaches to training. Yeah, no difference to being a boy or a, a girl in no. in the gym. Like you just same with everyone in the gym as well. They're just you know I get offended if someone's like oh um oh, I don't really want to spar hard with you because you're a girl. We've had that though. We've had that in the gym and we've got a, um, you know, because we've got a gym in Leicester and there's a lot of different religions and people from different countries yeah. and you get guys all along and they're not used to training with ladies. Yeah. Um, a couple of people with, um, what can I say, uh, don't like sparring with girls mm. and Iman sparred with them and they've realised they are, this is different, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's what, it, it, it's what I think. I think I saw it written down quite well on Facebook once, um, and I've kind of said that to my students. It's like if you, you know, you're a part of a team. Your gym's a team. Um, you know, you're a family, and you want, you know, you've most of your most of my gym. You know, you, like I said, the most people who come through my door don't fight. You know, it's like because it's so hard. You know, it's so hard to be that good and so commit. You've got to be so committed that it takes a special person, you know, with um with the capacity and the ability to spend that amount of time doing it. But if you if you don't train with the females the same way as you train with the males, you're just letting your team member down. Do you know what I mean? You're not you, you're not helping them <laughs> by. Yeah. You know, obviously, if you're 100 kilos and you're and you're, you're sparring with a you know a, a 55 kilo lass, you know you're not you don't need to put 100 percent power into your shots. But equally yeah. as such, you're not helping the uh, you know you're not helping your colleague um, yeah. become their best, like like the, the 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 fellas in your gym. You know, so I think it's that mindset, isn't it? Really, it's uh, as long yeah. as you're up for it and you're like, no, I want, I need this. Yeah, I what I want, then fine but yeah. uh, i'm quite lucky in the gym you know i've got like a small fighting team around me and they they all know you know how important the fights are for me and you know will help me train hard and you know i give them the same back as well and it's all like obviously there's a lot more men in the gym than than women we've got a few young kids that are now you know in teenage years and they're working their way up but that's another reason why i'm so strong as well is because you know everyone's always a little bit bigger or a little bit heavier or a little bit stronger yeah and it's only really good yeah but we we don't really spar that hard to be honest you know a lot of gyms uh they have they have sparring days or whatever and their one lesson is just like two hours of sparring or whatever and they spar really hard we don't do that I don't believe in hard sparring. You don't need to spar hard. You know, the ties don't do it. Um, we believe you spar, say, three quarters, so that you're not scared to do something and if you're not scared to get caught. Yeah. Um, so you see with a Dutch train, they, they, they spar and they try to kill each other. You know? Yeah. And I that mean, damage is done, not in the fights, in the gym. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got to condition, haven't you? You've got to be conditioned to what you're doing. But in the same breath, um, like you said, I'm I'm the same. It's like how much um, how much benefit do you get from panning each other's head in when you're sparring? You, for sparring, you you want to be experimenting with different techniques and ideas and feeling <laughs> comfortable enough to be able to try them. So it's like I want to try this thing, and I and I might walk onto a shot, and if I do, that's going to wreck, and it could be bad. But if it's three quarters power or half power i'll give it a shot do you know what i mean i'm going to give it a try i'm going to practice it up um yeah so i i i totally agree with that that strategy myself it makes perfect sense to me um what's the next uh, question on my list right um so who's your um right where's your favorite place that you ever fought okay your best place that you've ever fought um also who's was your favorite or best fight out of your many brazilian fights and also who would you want to fight again if you got a chance a rematch so my favorite place is hard because i've got a couple <laughs> yeah. so when we went to vegas that was amazing uh you know the experience we had was like staying on the vegas strip when we got there we went straight to um watch carl frotch versus no not carl frotch was it? Close. 
Carl, uh, no. What's his name? Frampton. Yeah, Carl Frampton, that's it. Carl Frampton versus Santa Cruz at the MGM Arena. Then the next night we went to watch Cirque du Soleil. And then um, the next day we went to Floyd Mayweather's gym. Uh, then uh -huh. the next day we were training at Floyd Mayweather's gym. Like we did, had so many experiences in, in Vegas and we met some like great friends. We met a, a group from Australia and a group from Holland um, and they're kind of become friends for life. So Vegas was amazing. Um, but I think Australia, like we obviously when we go Australia because it's so far we go for a week in advance before the fight um everyone's so friendly there we've been to Melbourne and Perth twice um and again just met up with friends uh that we know and it's just kind of made the experience and, and obviously the weather helps as well yeah so I think maybe, maybe Australia and, and Vegas was yeah, they were wicked. Um, my best fight was probably like, I always loved when I fought Alexis Rufus. Um, I was 17, 18 at the time. Uh, signed my infusion contract that morning, then won the infusion world title in that fight. Sold 110 tickets, um, you know, to, to, for that fight. And, and that was just crazy in itself. And uh, it was kind of like, Alexis Rufus was like number one at the time. And I was like the young gun coming through. Uh, and a beater and yeah it was just wicked and then everything just kind of went from there as well didn't it you know with infusion and yeah I can't remember the other question I know I, I threw three at you there didn't I I'm all right I've got a list yeah. uh yeah a rematch um when I fought Yolanda Schmidt in um, Melbourne that was a really good fight and we watched it back not that long ago didn't we and it, it was really technical and it was kind of like a knee war um, but not like a not like a clinch war. It was quite clean, quite a clean fight. Um, and I follow her now as well on Instagram, and and she's wicked. And yeah, maybe Yolanda. I don't know. It's hard. I don't really like. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Not a grudge match then. That one is it. That's just a respect match. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I like that answer definitely. So what? Um, how do you prep for a fight then? Um just like anyone else I think like I do a lot of running uh, I run every morning uh, like usually before work um, and then I'll go in the gym stretch do a bit of boxing and then I'll have my my, my evening session uh, after work uh, train so I think I run about five to six times a week and then um, again have five to six sessions in the evening a week and you're working for the NHS, is that right, at the moment? No. No? You know, you're a, you're a I, I work at... Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm like a tutor. So I'm like not a teacher, but I teach um, kids that have kind of been kicked out of school at a learning hub. So I teach them exercise and fitness. All right, great. Um, so obviously at the minute... At the minute, we've got a few kids in because uh, they're kind of the classed as vulnerable kids. Um, and then from the 1st of June, we'll have a few more in. Right. Good. So I'm still working at, at the moment. Uh, not full time. Usually it is full time. But yeah, through the pandemic, just a few days a week. And uh, we're running the food bank as well in Melton, where we live. Uh, so I do that a few times a week as well. So you, I mean, you've you know you've got a full time job. Uh, you sound so like with Chris, you know Chris Shaw as well. We was interviewing the other day. He's a roofer, isn't he? And uh, yeah. so you you know you you're fitting in like a, a pro a pro Thai boxers training regime around yeah. full time work. I mean, you, you know, I guess if you were a boxer or in another sport, you'd just be. You'd, yeah. be paid, you'd be paid a load of money just for doing the Thai boxing, but you know the amount of this is what I was saying about um, you know it's not for everybody. The amount of effort that you have to put in, you've got to be willing to commit everything yeah. to your Thai boxing. Yeah, I think I could do it without a full time job. You know, well, living up with my mum and dad. But um, you know, my mum and dad have said always said you need something after Thai boxing. You know, you need like a future. So that's the reason, you know, I'm kind of sticking at my full time job and, it, and it's a good job and I enjoy it. And, you know, sometimes it's so hard, you know, getting up early in the morning to run before work and then being at work all day and trying not to fall asleep some days. And then you, mean you do every day <laughs> and you've got your evening <laughs> session. Um, it's just tiring, <laughs> but it's worth it. Yeah. You get... Yeah. Sometimes I have a quick, quick nap. <laughs> 
you know. <laughs> 27. You're 27, yeah. man. You've got to have a nap when you're 27. I always say this to my young students. When you're 27, that's the turning point of everything. Um, yeah. You can go out drinking and boozing all night before you're 27, and you can get up the next day and go to work after like three hours sleep, and you might feel like you're going to die, but you can yeah. do it. But when you get to 27... No, that's it. No. That is the oh, end of that. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry? Um, that don't appeal to me anyway. I'm not a massive drinker. No, no, I can't imagine that you are, to be honest. It was probably good. I do have some uh, silly questions that I always ask at the end. But, oh. um, I mean, we're coming um, towards the end of the questions that I have um, written down here. I mean, who would you say your main influences are? I mean, you get, clearly, your folks are... Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. really great relationship you've got. It's great, you know. It's yeah, really I always say that. You know, like growing up, people always ask like, oh, who's your inspiration? And then it kind of like came to me like, I think growing up and my mum was a fighter and yeah. I remember we fought on the same show and I always remember like one thing is I was, I'd already fought and I was like in the crowd and um, they used to have like this back screen <laughs> And uh, my mum would be shadow boxing behind it and it'd be like the silhouette of her and I'd be like, oh my God, that looks so cool. And then, then my mum would come out and smoke would puff up and I was like, oh, oh that's wicked. So, so, I mean, I, I didn't know about your mum and I feel bad now because if I'd have known, I would have certainly loved her to be in the uh, in the discussion with us. I know, like, uh, what's, what is yeah, she? Is she there? Is she there? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, she's coming. She's, she's the hey, hi, all right. Nice to meet you. I am sorry that I didn't include you in this. I'm wrong. Tell Mac what 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 you used to do fighting, Thai boxing and, fighting. Yeah, yeah, I used to fight, but she's the star, not me. So oh no, but but she's just said, hasn't she? Where she's been, you and how much you inspired her. What what what's your what was your fight record? I mean, that was when was that that you used to fight? Yeah, my last fight was in 1999. Wow. <laughs> You know what? That's that is brilliant because you know, um, I mean, I've I've been in the Thai boxing circuit for about eighteen, nineteen years, and and there wasn't that many women. There certainly wasn't that many women fighters about then. You know, I mean, this is uh, what 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 was your record? Your fight record? Did you uh, you pro pro fighter? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I only got paid once. <laughs> yeah, pro <laughs> rules. Pro <laughs> rules. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't really uh, get paid, but um, I managed to get three British titles. So um, at uh, Thai boxing, kickboxing, and freestyle. So I was quite happy with that. Yeah. Uh, you fought Lucia yeah. Riker. Yeah, I got stopped by Lucia Riker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh, I'm say, oh, I'm good. I'm so glad you've come on. I'd have had you sat right there in the middle and been asking you all the same questions. Um, <laughs> Oh, you've been watching. What's the and they've been telling me all about their relationship, the Thai boxing and, and your relationship. And it looks really sweet and just perfect, perfect kind of training and family. Have you been honest? <laughs> yeah, no, they have. Mark, Mark's never anything but honest about Thai boxing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good. <laughs> So they get on, they get on, they say it is they're good at tr the good training well, together. He tells me what to do and I just do it. Like there's no I just do it for an easier life. It's gotta be done. Perfect. And, like people say, like, oh, how'd you get up that early in the morning? Because like I know that my dad's in the gym waiting to take me on the pads or you know, he puts so much of his time that that's the reason I get up in the morning actually is because of my dad. I can't just turn around and say, oh, I can't be bothered today, dad. Like, that's not an answer. Do you know what I mean? So it is like kind of an inspiration as well because he's the reason I get up and I, and I do it because I know he won't take stupid answers or, or, or excuses. Do you know what I mean? Well, you only have one excuse What's when you've got who's in Thailand and you have... Dengue. Dengue fever, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I was really poorly once in Thailand, right? And I weren't training for a fight or anything, but we were all planning to go for a run the next morning, like the whole group. And I woke up in the middle of the night to go toilet. I don't know what was wrong with me. Like I had to crawl to the toilet because my calves were that tight. Like I couldn't walk. It was so weird. And the next day, like obviously my dad woke me up to go running because I wasn't up. And I said, dad, like this happened in the night. And he thought I was joking, and I wasn't. 
And then I ended up going to the like the doctors over there and I had like dengue fever, which is like from mosquitoes, like and it, it affects your blood and stuff. But I was so poorly and he, he was like, What? What do you mean you can't walk? Come on, we're going for a run. <laughs> Oh, I can't. The old, the, old, the, old, the old gym got it. Yeah. And we took him to the to the doctors. So the old gym was about twenty five of us all going to the doctors, except for me. And I said to the doctor, "Why, why, why ain't I got it?" Mosquitoes, damn and bite him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he goes, "Maybe you too old, cheeky <laughs> bastard." And uh, then we found out about a month later that he wasn't a doctor, he was a vet. <laughs> so we've all been going to the vets for, for a month. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And the whole gym, except you got this. So you'll have been like, I don't believe you. This is a conspiracy yeah. to not train yeah. another day off. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Through the old gym, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was the only one who didn't get it. And that's the, and that's the only... Uh, the only legitimate excuse was an actual, what did you call yeah. it? Some kind of fever, mosquito related Dengue. fever. Yeah, Dengue that's fever. it. It's it. Uh, that, that's it. I always say, is there a bone sticking out the skin? <laughs> yeah, even on my 18th birthday, like I was training, you know, because I had a fight. And, um, you know, there's been loads of occasions where, you know, I could do this, do that, but I can't because I know the rules and, uh, you know, I've got a fight and that's what comes first. Yeah. Christmas Day training before presents. Oh wow, that is committed. Well, that was a tradition till about two years ago. Yeah, until they got old enough to say, No, no. we're not going. <laughs> yeah. so we all get up in the morning, we all go on a massive run, they come in and have a shower, and I'll go in the gym and carry on training. And they'll all be sitting in the front room ready for the presents, and I'll be training as long as, long long as, 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 long as possible just to piss them off. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's great. That's hilarious. I mean, that's what, like, I'm quite a nice person. You know, I don't like to see people being injured, but I mean, it's a whole different ball game in the gym, isn't it? You know, where people like, oh, yeah. and you're like, oh, is there a bone sticking out the skin? Mm-hmm. Is there one? It's like, right, well, crack on, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if, if, there's a, if, if I can see a bone protruding out, then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll might give it a few seconds a of little uh, a little a bit little. of it. Oh, that looks sore. Probably better get you to. And the rest of the time, it's just like, no, just crack on. You know, you, you'll be fine. And you can usually tell within a couple of seconds whether somebody's actually injured or not. But yeah, that's usually, uh, that's kind of my saying, is there a bone sticking out of the skin? I think Robin even says that sometimes, <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> right, so, so I, I'm not, sorry. I thought in. Um, Cyprus, um, and he broke his arm in the first round, but he carried on for three rounds. There's three, three threes, and he never said a word till after the fight. And he goes, I can't lift my arm off. And he actually broke his arm. Well, is it elbow? Elbow, yeah, snapped it there. And he still carried on for two weeks when, when he was back and did, yeah. didn't go hospital. She's like, oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> be all right. Be all right. I remember watching it live, thinking, "Why is he not punching?" Like, "Oh, if he just punched, then he's so good with his hands." But <laughs> his elbow. <laughs> you speak to you speak to other uh, um, fighters. Same. Don, one of my coaches uh, from from uh, Pete Bleasdale's gym. He's fought with a. I'm sure he's fought with a broken. Oh, Pete fought with a broken ankle and stuff, haven't they? Uh, you hear that a lot. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, you haven't got time, have you? To. You've just got to, you're either going to carry on, you're either going to carry on or you're not going to carry on. That's, uh, that's pretty much it, I guess, isn't it? Right, I've got some daft questions. Oh, before we've got daft questions, tell me, is there anybody you want to mention your sponsors um, or anything like that to, to whilst we're yeah, finished? I've got a few sponsors. So I want to thank uh, Mutai Addict. Uh, they're a company based in America, but they have wicked uh, shorts designs and uh, they've always supported me, you know, for the last couple of years. Um, KM Interiors, they're a new sponsor and they're like a local uh, kitchen fitters. So I want to say thanks to them. And I've got a new sponsor as well, Bowman uh, Carpentry and Joinery. So thanks to them. They're all kind of starting with me on our one championships journey. Uh, and thanks to King Tape and Feel Supreme. Groovy. Right, this is the all important quick fire round now to finish off. Um, so uh, these are the questions that we haven't prepared for, and we can do you can all answer these if you like. We don't need to take too much consideration in the in the answers because they're a bit silly, to be honest. Okay, so 
first one is guilty pleasure go chocolate chocolate <laughs> crisps crisps <laughs> groovy Noffy pies are a big favorite on the old guilty pleasure for uh for the, for the fires so far that's that's always that's come up a few times banoffee pie that goddamn banoffee pie okay right oh. this is a proper weird question um and i asked chris Shaw this the other day um and uh, and his answer was so fast i was quite surprised um this is a really weird question right if he could use <coughs> some kind of food as a weapon to take into the ring what would it be go pork chop chili courgette yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <chop. laughs> oh, Sorry, I'm just, I don't know why I think that's so funny. Chris just went whipped cream straight away. I was just like, whipped cream? Whipped cream? <laughs> yeah, he's, but he'd had it all planned out in a split. He's like, spray it on the mat, they'll slip, and it's like flipping. I was like, you thought of that far too quick, you know? It's like a, the, the, the courgette. I mean, what are you going to do with the courgette? Are you jabbing with the courgette? Sorry? Yeah. Sword. Sword. <laughs> Using it as a sword. <laughs> Chili's a good one, isn't it? Is that chili for the eyes? Yeah. And a pork chop. Mark, I've got a feeling that you just like pork chops, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pork chop. Oh, a pork chop. Oh, dear. Right, okay. Um, right, are you ready? I don't know if you'll know this one. Most embarrassing moment. Uh. <laughs> You don't really know. Oh, <laughs> you know what I want to say. And I was just... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was only, like, young. When I was young, I was jogging, like, next to my mum, jogging home from the gym, and I ran straight into a lamppost. Like, oh. all of... And this old couple stopped, didn't they? And they told me to tell the lamppost off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do with Rafi. She bites his arm, like... Blooming table, come on, stupid table. That's a really <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's a cute one. Right, okay. This is a tricky one because um because with it, with other people, I've been on their Facebook page and look at the groups and see what what things people are into um for this question. Uh, but I when I went on yours, man, into the uh, group section. It's just Thai boxing, Thai boxing and spot. So I've literally just picked up any random here. We've got kiss, marry, roundhouse kick, right? Okay. And I know you've got a partner, so I'm keeping it set. We're not doing it a serious one. Kiss, marry, roundhouse kick. And I've given you Ronda Rousey, Spider Man, and David Williams. And you can, you may have, all have different ideas on this one. Marry. Uh, kiss, Spider Man. Marry David Williams because he's funny, and then kick Ronda Rousey. Way good, yes. What about you, Mark? I I shall not participate in that one. Uh, that's it, guys. I mean, that's that's all I've got. That's all I've got. I've had an absolute belting time chatting to you. I swear to God, yeah. that was ace. Yeah. Well, lovely to meet you. Really, really lovely to meet you, family uh, Iman. And like I said, I've met Mark Impact before, haven't we? I've never obviously uh, met you, Iman, and certainly not M Maxine. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, thanks so much, guys. I've had a belting time. Really appreciate it. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Thank you. Great, great stuff. Um, this will be, I'll upload it onto my Red Kite page and um, I will uh, let you know when it goes up. But thanks so much, guys. I've really, really, really loved talking to you and I think everybody will have enjoyed that. So thanks very much and um, we'll, I'll hopefully speak to you again soon. So, yeah. okay, everybody, th thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye.